Welcome to another episode of In My Own Backyard. For this episode, we are off Welcome to... Welcome on board the Union Pearson Express. Quebec City. Toronto, International Airport. We're going there because it's a long weekend, and um, uh, Quebec City has been promoting their their uh, city as a weekend destination, and there's nobody who knows weekend destinations better than me. So Quebec City Tourism Board has invited us to come and see what we can do, and what kind of trouble we can get into. So right now we're on the Up, Up Express train and we're heading to the airport. Very excited. This is day one of a very awesome Quebec City three-day itinerary. Hey guys, I just arrived in the beautiful Quebec City and we literally just arrived in our accommodations. This is the beautiful Hotel Le Germain here in the old part of Quebec City. You have to see these accommodations, it's fantastic. And as much as I'd love to sleep in that comfy bed, our concierge recommended this restaurant for dinner called Chez Rayou and Pettigrew. With the creative cuisine of Chef Dominique Jacques, I started with a local bear called Belle Goel. Gogo ordered the flaxseed fed duck and I ordered the slow braised beef shoulder. For dessert, I grabbed the maple flavored eclair and Gogo got the sea buckhorn shock. Delicious. After an incredible sleep with breakfast included here at Le Germain Hotel, we are off. So we are walking along the Petit Chaplain. It's uh, one of the oldest streets here in Quebec City. Uh, I just found Gordana. She's walking ahead of me here. Um, so we're just trying to find like a cute little coffee shop or something. Located on the lower part of Old Quebec, Quartier Petit Champlain was once the capital of New France, a small portside village that in 1608 comprised a fur trading post. The narrow pedestrian-only cobblestone streets are lined with historic buildings, souvenir shops, aboriginal shops, bistros, artisan boutiques, and Quebec cuisine restaurants. The main road running through Quartier Petit Champlain is Rue de Petit Champlain, where you'll find some of the first houses from the former French colony that were built hundreds of years ago. Along the street, you'll find bistros, art galleries, and specialized handicraft boutiques, leather, jewelry, decorative arts, and more. The fresco on the side of this building depicts the lives and major events of the residents of the Cap Blanc district, one of the 35 districts of Quebec City. So what do you think about those streets in Quebec City? I think they're I... absolutely beautiful. I'll be honest, I really hate steps, but at least these steps are pretty. This outdoor staircase dates back to 1635, a few years prior to the death of Samuel de Chaplin, the city's founder, and they are the oldest in Quebec City. Uh, right behind me is, um, I'm not sure of sure the name of the church, but our tour guide told us that it is Notre the... Victorious. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, because you know, the name's written right on the church. But anyways, okay. Um, so... This church is considered the heart of Quebec City. That's what our tour guide told us. Uh, we're probably, I think right now, we're in the oldest, oldest part of Quebec City. It's simple, but simply beautiful. Notre Dame de Victoires Church is one of the oldest churches in North America, built on the ruins of Champlain's first settlement. Elise, our guide from yesterday, she said that this mural behind me is uh, the story of the Quebec City people, the heritage. The Royal Battery was named in honor of Louis XIV of France, who founded its construction back in 1691 and was part of the city's defenses under the French regime. Next, we take the funicular to the upper part of the old city, which will drop us off in front of Frontenac Hotel, which we'll explore tomorrow. For now, it's Notre Dame de Quebec. Notre Dame de Quebec Basilica Cathedral was built in 1647 under the French regime. We just found a store that is 
Christmas decorations all year. We just came out of a ridiculously cold Christmas and winter. But there's something oddly beautiful about the spirit of Christmas and its effects on my soul. Palliard is bread first and foremost, but it's also croissants, biscuits, eclairs, sandwiches, soups, salads, gelato, cakes, chocolates. In short, it's a whole world of homemade delicacies that have made the reputation of the Palliard Coffee Bakery. I can't even begin to describe how delicious their smoked meat sandwich was. It actually brought a tear to my eye. I'm just saying. We, we stopped by to get coffee because it's and already hot chocolate. And hot chocolate. Cause we saw this really cool place that looks like a chocolate place. But now we're gonna go to uh, Les Monastery uh, Augustine. On August 1st, 1639, three sisters from the Augustine Order came to Quebec to establish what would become North America's first hospital north of Mexico. For about four centuries, the Augustine sisters devoted themselves to caring for the body and soul. They founded 12 hospitals, which became the foundation for Quebec's public health care system. Today, the monastery continues the passion and compassion that inspired and motivated the sisters by functioning as a place of welcome, hospitality, memory, rest, and renewal. Uh, this street is uh, St. Jean, and it's one of the main streets here in Quebec City, where all the streets are, cobblestone streets. Uh, such a fantastic, beautiful little place. Outside, it's raining complete cats and dogs right now. It seems every time I go away lately, it's been raining. Um, so we took a break and we ducked inside this um, grocery store. And this grocery store is called J.A. My Son. And it's been around since 1871, like over 100 years old. It's still in operation. And it is the oldest grocery store in North America. So I'm literally walking through history right now. Well. Moisin. Well, you have to see one thing. Okay. Mid 19th century, that was very English in Quebec City. Okay. After the war, the Seven Years' War, when they came to fight the French and they won. In 1763, they signed the Treaty of Peace and the Treaty of Paris. And uh, after that, well, the. Uh, uh, well, almost uh, everything inside the walls had been destroyed during that period of war. Yeah. So after that, well, the British start to rebuild the city inside the walls. That was only uh, in 1820 when they start to rebuild okay. uh, all the houses yes. inside the walls. Yes. And uh, so that's why we had a very, very big influence of English okay. uh, during the mid 19th century. And when Moisa bought this house, he bought it from a Scottish man. So that was already in upstairs. It's a uh, and it's a uh, uh, Nouvelle. Uh -huh. It's very, very British upstairs. Okay. Uh -huh. Very English style. Okay. Nice. So he, he, bought, he bought the house to look like an English. Okay. And also to feel like an English. Okay. Because if you had both English house, Look, uh, looking English looking. Well, you were you had everything okay. to make your business very easier. Okay, oh. okay, okay. So that's what happened. We, we rebuilt the apartment ah. because that was a, a residence uh -huh. only. So he set up uh, his, uh, his uh, new store here on this floor and rebuild the rest. So he was living upstairs oh, yes. and then the restaurant was down, uh, oh, yeah. grocery store was downstairs. Yeah, that was like that in 1970. <laughs> wow. It's like this because we live upstairs. <laughs> you guys live upstairs now. <laughs> That's awesome. After we left the oldest grocery store in North America, we found this chocolate place. It's, it's uh, Musée du Chocolat, and which I think translates to Chocolate Museum. Uh, so we're gonna take a look around here and see what's going on, and then obviously we're gonna buy some chocolate, right, Gordy? Yes. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. Um, yeah, and so let's take a look and see what's going on here. So the chocolate shop sells handmade chocolate, cookies, brownies, 
cupcakes, and hot chocolate. The museum's collection of ancient and modern accessories and chocolate making techniques displays the Mayan history of chocolate making techniques, which is pretty cool. Chef Jean-Luc Bollet and Ahmad Marchand together opened Chez Boulet and Bistro Boreal to highlight Quebec's unique regional and seasonal products from the Boreal region. I ordered the braised beef cheek, Gordana ordered the shared Atlantic cod, and together we share a frozen caramel parfait with apple center. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. You know me, I found the beer. I always find the beer. Uh, so this is all local beers from around Quebecois. Um, so, you know, I like my local beers, it's fantastic. That's it for day one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment about Quebec City. Tune in next week for day two. Cheers.